sneak, uh, sneaking in a cup of coffee. We've just finished marking 154 answer papers, I think. Got a Kit Kat waiting for me after I have told you all about the histology of the uterus. Cool organ, the uterus. Um, it's famous because, of course, it sheds its lining, which regrows every month, every menstrual cycle. So I've got two slides. Well, I learned something as well. Got two slides. So these are both sections of uterus, but they're in different stages. One is in the, what have I got here? Uh, so I've got this box of slides and one is labeled as in the menstrual cycle. So the endometrium will be very thin. And one is in the progestational phase, which is a bit of a new word for me. This is a very old collection of slides. Um, and that's when the endometrium is very thick, when the endometrium is ready to receive the blastocyst, the embryo for implantation and develop to support it, right? Now, progestational stage, that's also known as the secretory stage or the luteal stage, right, in modern parlance. But progestational, okay, so the gestational period is pregnancy. Progestational is before pregnancy so the progestational phase of the endometrium is when it's thick and that progestational phase is maintained by the hormone progesterone and that's its job i little light bulb went on in my brain earlier it's like that's why it's called progesterone oh cool always learning um okay That is the section with the thicker endometrium. So the this shouldn't take us too long to look at, actually. It's a fascinating tissue, um, certainly from a molecular signaling embryology perspective. And there are three layers. There's the endometrium, the inside layer, the myometrium, the muscle layer, and the perimetrium. And the uterus tends to be such a thick organ, I don't think we're gonna see the perimetrium, the covering, but to be honest, that's no great loss, really. The endometrium is the bit we're most interested in. Um, metrium is the, comes from the Greek word meaning uterus. Um, endo means inside, myo means muscle, so the endometrium, like I say, is the inside layer. The myometrium is the muscle layer, which is actually pretty interesting. And the perimetrium is the outer layer, like perimeter, the outside covering, right? Um, all right. What can we, what can we see? How bright are we? Um, bom, bom, bom. Okay, so let's have a look. Right, that's that there. Oh, it's losing its stain a bit there. But that there is the, uh, the lumen inside the uterus. The uterus is a muscular bag, has got a lumen inside. That's what the, the ova or the blastocyst, if it gets, in, gets fertilized, passes into. And that space is directly continuous with the vagina, right? Which is how the endometrium is shed. Um, so that's, the, that's the, uh, the lumen. So we're looking at endometrium there. Yep, that looks very endometrium-y. Uh, and as we go that away, it changes, and now it's quite different, and now we're looking at muscle there. And in there I can see blood vessels and what have you. And then, oh no, is that a cut edge? I can't, I think that's a cut edge. Yeah, it's too straight. Oh yeah, look, there's a, there's a, there's a corner, that's a cut edge. So we're not going to see the perimetrium, but that doesn't matter too much. Okay. Um, hmm, has lost a bit of stain, but to be honest... I feel quite lucky that I've got this section because normal, like, science teaching collections of um, histology slides don't have the uterus in them. So the endometrium is super important because this is the layer that the embryo will implant into uh, and this is the layer that will form the placenta which will connect to the embryo and support it as it becomes a fetus and continues to grow, right? Um, now, 
it, it can get described as having two layers or three layers. Let's talk about the two layers, which is a bit more modern. So do you see how here, um, right, those, um, those wiggly spaces we're looking at are glands. And we can also see blood vessels in there. Now, as we go towards the myometrium, towards the muscle layer, where we start to see those glands peter out a little bit, but before we get to the muscle, we'll look at this at a higher power in a moment. This is on my four times objective lens, 10 times to my eyes, so uh, 40 times magnification to my eyes. Um, as you get down to the basal layer, so the layer of the endometrium next to the muscle, it's the basal layer which has the kind of the progenitor cells that will keep regrowing the rest of the endometrium every month. And that's the basal layer. And then as we go up here, this is the functional layer. Um, and it's the functional layer that gets lost. So if you think about the cycles of the, or the phases of the um, menstrual cycle, um, during menstruation then, um, say the first four or five days of the cycle, um, the blood vessels that are supplying blood to the endometrium become constricted, less blood flows in, the tissue becomes ischemic and it sloughs off, it, is, uh, it breaks off and is lost and is shed and that's the menses with a little bit of uh, bleeding, right? Um, and then in the prolif pr proliferative phase, so we can have a look at that on the other slide in a moment. In the proliferative phase, these basal cells then rapidly remake the functional layer and these glands develop and they start off as simple glands and then they start to get um, more wiggly and the arteries regrow and they get called helical or helicine arteries. They extend up into the endometrium and give it the blood supply. Now the reason that occurs, well, the reason you have glands and arteries in the endometrium is that when the embryo implants, it's going to trigger a series of reactions and it's the glands that are going to give nutrients to the developing embryo and it's the blood vessels that are going to form the maternal side of the placenta and the fetal side will extend into that. That's where you have the placenta and the kind of the link between the maternal and the fetal circulation, but also a barrier in between to a certain extent. Um, so that's what's going on here. So um, after, um, once, menst once, once menstruation has finished, the proliferative phase lasts, say, up to about the 14th day of the cycle. It's a bit variable, but up to the point of ovulation. And then after, ov when, when ovulation occurs, this functional layer should be ready to receive the blastocyst if fertilization occurs. And then progesterone maintains this functional layer for um, a couple more weeks. And if fertilization doesn't <coughs> happen and the placenta doesn't start to form, um, we're getting into other areas of embryology and what have you, but if implantation doesn't happen, then the changes to the endometrium that would happen during pregnancy don't happen. Progesterone drops off. Functional layer of the endometrium is lost and the cycle begins again. Okay, so let's go to a higher power and see what we can see. Um, this is my, oh, that's, sorry, that's a bit bright. This is my 10 times objective. This is my 20 times objective. Um, if we go towards the surface, what can we see? Hmm. Can't see very much the stain. There's not a lot of stain there. So in the endometrium here, you can see there's a real mix of cells. Uh, and this is the stroma. So these are the stromal cells. Oh, by the way, we've looked at lots of other uh, tubes in the body. The uterus is essentially a modified tube, like many things inside the body. And we've seen um, the mucosa. So the endometrium is a modified mucosa. Um, the myometrium would be the muscularis layer. And then the perimetrium would be the serosa or the adventitia. Just like we've seen the same organization elsewhere in the body, but it's specialized. So there we go. If I, if I go up here, you can see that we've got um, some circles there, so those are blood vessels. So we've got lots of blood vessels in here. Like I say, these are called helicine arteries. So they're spiraling around like that. So then we tend to see the, you know, the cut, the transverse cut through the tube because they're spiraling up there. And there are some larger vessels with uh, blood cells within them. 
And, um, you know, we've seen blood cells, blood vessels throughout the body, so we get used to seeing those lined by a, an endothelium and with muscular walls and that sort of thing. Whereas over here, that looks quite different, right? That's the, the gland then. These are the uterine glands, and we saw at the lower power how the, endothe uh, the endometrium is, is filled with uterine glands. And they're lined by an epithelium. I don't know if you can make out what type of epithelium that is yet. Let's try and find a nice section. But as I slide through, can you see how it's quite a distinctive shape, right? Um, so you can tell what stage of the uh, of what stage of uh, the menstrual cycle you are when you look at the functional layer by whether the uterine glands is like simple and straight or whether they've got longer and um, wigglier, whether they look like this. This is um, so. This is why this is uh, labelled the progestational stage or the secretory stage because uh, and secretory you can see is related to the glands right Let's see if i can uh... that's a great looking um, epithelium right you can see there the uh, simple columnar epithelium the cells are in a single layer and the cells are taller than they are wide let's pop back out to the Say the 20 times objective, I think, is a bit better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and let's slide from surface to deep. All right, so there's, there's the surface of the endometrium lining the, um, the lumen of the uterus. That is exactly where the blastocyst will implant. Um, uh, but we, we haven't got a lot of stain there. We can see there's lots of cells in here. There's a real mix of cells, these stromal cells. And as we go in deeper, we see these uterine glands. Uh, we can actually see some pretty nice epithelial cells in the middle there. And as we go, we also find these, these blood vessels throughout. So we've got a nice, thick, functional layer of the endometrium here with all these glands and blood vessels waiting for that blastocyst so they can get on with making a placenta and doing the whole pregnancy thing. Um, that's what I was on about. And now look, see how that changes? So down here, we're at the basal layer of the endometrium. And I know that because if I go any deeper, I'm getting into all the smooth muscle now. And look at how the smooth muscle fibers are running in lots of different directions. And we're seeing other blood vessels in there and there'll be nerves as well, because of course muscle likes nerves and blood vessels, but it's a real morass. You've got lots of muscle fibers running in lots of different directions. It is actually well organized and there are muscle fibers running around, but um, the smooth muscle in the myometrium is um, particularly good in the uterus. It can really stretch because the uterus can expand you know, several times its size to, as the fetus grows within it. And then once stretched, it's these smooth muscle cells which are gonna be responsible for squeezing the uterus and expelling the fetus and then expelling the uh, placenta afterwards. So that's the myometrium. Uh, in some cases, like I said, we haven't got the full width here, but in some cases you might find a vascular layer in between the muscle layers. Um, but yeah, this is all smooth muscle and there's just loads of smooth muscle in here. And all these fibers are really running around, wrapping in different directions. Because um, you don't want to just squeeze or squeeze. You need to ring, ring the uterus out to push the fetus in the direction it needs to go in. And it needs quite a bit of force, right? So that's the myometrium. Pretty straightforward, but um, <laughs> pretty cool to look at. Pretty cool shapes. So the basal layer is super important. The ba basal layer is not shed um, during menstruation. Uh, the basal layer is the layer that produces the functional layer after menstruation. All right, so let's look at the other slide then. So just another recap, look, that's the thickness of the endometrium that we got here. And then there's the myometrium. Okay, so this is, I don't think I've looked at this one. This is the, um, the uterus after menstruation. Okay, what can we see? Well, the stain's a lot better. Um, 
Right, you see that? There's that morass of smooth muscle running in all sorts of different directions, right? So that's smooth muscle. That's the myometrium. And you can see again, it's a, it's a cut block, so we're not going to see the perimetrium. And then here, now we're starting to see the, uh, the, the endometrium. And um, it's a lot thinner, isn't it? It's a lot smaller. And we can see there are some glands there. We can see those glands are a lot simpler. We can see some blood vessels in there. So this is the basal layer of the endometrium that remains after menstruation, after that functional layer has been shed. Uh, let's pop up to 10 times. And there we go. It does, it, yeah, that, that the surface of the endometrium just looks, looks broken, just looks like it's been torn, looks like it's a sectioning artifact. Um, but this is the, the endometrium after menstruation. There's no clear surface to the endometrium yet, right? And yet, can you see how that's the basal layer of the endometrium right up against the myometrium? So it's these cells here that are going to be responsible for rebuilding that whole, whole functional layer. And again, we can see the glands. Um, right, so we can see the glands there lined by that simple columnar epithelium and we can see the blood vessels as well which are going to regrow and uh, form the helicine arteries uh, and that's all we got yeah I um yeah yeah <laughs> you know there's a lot to talk about with the uterus but in terms of uh, the histology that's it endometrium you've seen the diagrams in the textbooks maybe that's what it actually looks like myometrium thick muscular layer great at really stretching and then runs in lots of different directions because of the job it has to do perimetrium is just your your typical covering that you see in most organs most viscera all right um on to my kit kat see you next week mm -hmm.